My name is Yuri Draben. I don't have a lot of time. I'm not planning on losing a single second. I got 12 minutes. I got three stories. I got one message. My message is about opening up. My message is about being ready to take on the chances and the opportunities and the possibilities that life, that life gives you. Uh, I'll be brief. Story number one. Story number one is when I was about to turn 19 years old. My, yeah, a couple of years back, my parents approached me and they were like, hey, uh, you've been a good boy, you've been a good son, we like you very much, we, we love you very much. <laughs> we love you very much, so we actually teamed up with a whole family, and we're thinking about the whole family, technically meaning one uncle, but that's a nice way to put it. We teamed up with a whole family, and we're thinking about getting you a scooter, a Piaggio scooter, because it seems the scooter is the thing, you know, and kids are crazy about the scooters, and we want to reward you, so we want to give you a scooter. I'm like, whoa, that's nice, you know, I appreciate that very much, scooter, cool, but I'm, I'm not a bike guy, and, you know, I don't, I, I think that's dangerous, I don't want it, so, uh, can I have the money instead? <laughs> They're like, what do you mean the money? Like, the money that you would have spent on the scooter. No, you can't have the money. Can I have the money instead, please? I'll spend it on something nice. What are you going to spend it on? I'm not going to tell you, but it's going to be cool. Blah, blah, back and forth, back and forth, negotiated a little bit. I ended up getting the money, and the next day, what I did, I booked a flight to London. And um, I went to London, and uh, I went to the seminar uh, held by that guy. You guys might, may know him. Uh, his name is Anthony Robbins, and it's actually pretty crazy. He has this thing called, this big seminar called Unleash the Power Within. And he basically does this mega churches kind of thing. He gathers like 10,000 people in one room, and he tells them to do stupid stuff like, you know, chest bump each other and high five each other and all that stuff. And I don't really approve of all of that, but um, he gets up on stage, and the the, the, the people go crazy, and he goes like, thank you for coming out, thank you for coming out, and people are crazy. And he goes like, by the way, by the way, at the end of the day, you're going to walk on fire. And everybody's like, yeah, walk on fire. I'm like, I'm going to do what? <laughs> and then he shows this picture of that. Yeah, you're going to walk on that thing. At the end of the day, you're going to walk on fire. I'm like, fuck, I should have gotten a scooter. You know? <laughs> but anyhow, uh, long story short, after the day of... Uh, basically uh, going back and forth and, you know, motivating us in a very positive way, brainwashing us in a very good way. Uh, I did it. I firewalked, you know, and it, I'm not going to give you the, the whole story, but I basically did something like, you know, I stood in front of a 10-meter long stretch of burning coal at a temperature of, of about 900 degrees or something, and I was like, yeah, yeah, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, and I boom, 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 and I walked, and I lived. And I arrived at the other end, and I was like, that was an oh my God thing for me. You know, that just blew me away. Because if you think about it, if you can set your mind to tell your feet not to get burned when you walk on freaking burning coals, what's every day's fears compared to that? You know, what's fear of rejection? What's fear of being whatever compared to that? It's nothing. So I came back, and I was unstoppable. You know, I was like, I didn't care. I mean, I walked on fire. I didn't care, you know. I, I, I didn't care. I, I, I let go. I, d I wasn't afraid to tell people, hey, I like you. I wasn't afraid to tell, to tell people, hey, you look good today. You want to get coffee? Or, you know, by the way, I, I've been meaning to introduce myself for a while. My name is Yuri. You want to get some time together? You seem like a cool person. That totally opened me up. And as a result of me opening up, other people opened up back to me because I walked on fire. It's pretty crazy, right? But anyhow, story number two. Um, story number two is a story about physical appearance. A couple of years later, in 2006, when I've already moved to Warsaw to become a student, I went for an exchange to Singapore. From Warsaw to Singapore. Beautiful spot, by the way, if you ever get a chance to visit, I highly recommend you go visit. But um, it's not about a story about a Singapore. As you might have noticed, or as Ralph might have pointed out, I have an afro or something that resembles it. I have a lot of hair sticking out of my head. That was not always the case. As a matter of fact, when I went to Singapore, I looked like that. <laughs> and I came back like that. Boom! People have seven years in Tibet. I had my seven months in Singapore, baby. Like, I, I always knew I had that hair. You know, my mom has it, my sis has it, but I never let it grow. And I was like, I went there. I was kind of like afraid of the mid stage where it looked like, uh, you know, a little bit ridiculous. And, and I was like, I went there. I'm like, all right, screw the barber, screw the hairdresser. I'm never going there. I'll let it grow, you know, and it grew. But um, it's not a story about my healthy hair, you know, like, yeah, my <laughs> it grows really fast. Uh, but you know what it changed? It changed freaking everything, you know, because when I came back 
And I, when I get back to, to college, I swear to you, people did not recognize me. You know, I walk the hallway, I meet this kid called Steven. I'm like, what's up, Steven? He goes like, who the... Oh my God, man, what did they do to you in Asia? You know, I, I, and I was getting that from all angles. People did not recognize me at all. And you know what? They, because it's, it's crazy and it's ridiculous, but it totally works. Because I have an afro, they look at me and they go like, oh, he has funny hair. He must be a funny guy. I'll smile at the guy. And they smile at me. I smile back. You know, they said things to me that they would never said things said before. And I said things and I did things that I would have never done before because of the piece of hair that I was carrying on my skull. Is this ridiculous? Yes. Did it work? Oh, yes. And if you think about it again, like you walk on burning coal, then you get back home, you do stuff. You grow hair, you get back home, you do stuff that you would have never done before. That's a ridiculous shortcut of our mind. Think about that. Story number three. Oh, yeah, permission to be better. Uh, story number three. Uh, that story is about an extreme sport. When I was about 20 years old, I think 21, I saw this video that my mind did not fully comprehend at the time. I saw a video of a guy jumping off a cliff and flying off. And um, I was like, how is that even possible? The guy's wearing a squirrel kind of thing and he just flies away in a flat line. I mean, how does physics imply? Where does logic imply? It's not possible. So I got to the bottom of this and I found out that this thing was called the wingsuit. And probably a lot of you guys uh, you know, know wingsuit by now. It, 10 years ago, that was not the case. Not a whole lot of people knew about the wingsuit stuff. So I reached out to the community, which was super tiny in Poland back then, and I was like, guys, you want, I want to do this. I want to be one of you guys. And they were like, all right, cool. You got to do this. You got to do this. It's actually a long path, so you got you to get your medical test. You got to go out and do this and this. And I was like, all right, I'm on board. So I went to see the doctor. It took, me a, it took me a week. I went to see the doctor, and the doctor goes like, an old dude, I remember him as if it was yesterday. He looks at me, he goes like, all right, I can see you have a pair of legs, you have a pair of arms, okay, you have ears, okay, you're good to go, your head looks okay, let's have a look at your eyes, and he pulls, th pulls this. And he goes like, what number do you see? I'm like, doctor, that's a tricky question, there's no number in there. He's like, what number do you see? It's like, seriously, there's no number. And, okay, and he shuts me down like that, he, he closes the book, he goes like, no number, no jumping. And I'm like, the, the doctor, but the, first of all, there's no number in there. And as a matter of fact, I, I, I'm pretty sure you see the number. As a matter of fact, I want you to turn to the person right next to you on your right and tell them what number you think you see right now. And if you said something other than I think 74, then you're just as dysfunctional as I am. <laughs> and you're never going to be a professional pilot. You're never going to be a professional racing driver and a number of other things. Too bad. But anyhow, that shut me down, you know, no number, no jumping, get the fuck out of my room, you know, I, I got out, and that ended for me, because it was 10 years ago, I didn't really have it in me to pursue that. And it took me eight years to actually get back to the idea, to get back to the idea of, um, of doing that. I was like, screw that, you know, screw the doctor, screw the number, I'll find a way around. And I started Googling it, I started, you know, getting to the bottom of things, asking around who knew somebody, who knew somebody, blah, 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 blah. And I came across that group of wonderfully crazy people who did this thing called the Dream Jump. And believe me or not, but two and a half weeks after taking that decision that I would do it, I was standing right there. That's a cliff in Norway, one kilometer vertical drop, one of the biggest cliffs in the world. And I was doing that. I was standing right there with over a kilometer of rope attached to my body, nearing the edge of the cliff. I was doing a, I'm not going to go into technical details here, but I, I was doing a rope jump. And as a matter of fact, that's me nearing the cliff. And as a matter of fact, the whole group is uh, currently a holder of Guinness World Record for the longest rope jump in the world, which is, which is a nice add-on, and, and I was, as I was nearing that cliff, I was like, what are you doing, man? I mean, oh, fuck, man, what are you doing, man? That's a one kilometer vertical drop, you're gonna jump over, why? Why do you need these things, you know? Why do you have to push? Why do you have to do stuff that scares you? And a million different questions went through my mind in one second, and then I just jumped. And then I just let go and jumped. Man, I freaking flew. And that was the best 
thing in my life so far, you know. As a matter of fact, and I'm not, not particularly proud of that, but uh, when I was hanging midair, 500 meters in midair, I actually had my iPhone in my, in my pocket, and I pulled it out, I took a selfie. <laughs> I was like, you know, o temporal motors, right? But yeah, I took a selfie, and I got it. What's up? <laughs> so anyhow, um, what do these three stories have in common? I think they're... They're about opening up to the opportunity, and they're about seizing the opportunity and grabbing it by the balls and squeezing it until it sings your freaking favorite song, you know? It's, it's about being ready to do stuff. Because, you see, it's way harder when you think about it than when you just do it. You know, Nike, Richard Branson, they're all saying the same thing. Just do it. Uh, and a cool thing is that one thing leads to another. It's this infinite positive loop. Once you get into that, it's really kind of hard to get out of it. It's a really good place to be at. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know what? Because I, uh, I stand here and I keep telling you about doing stuff that scares you, and because this year's theme is embrace the other, I'm actually going to have a story number four for you. But this time it's not about the past. This time it's about the future. And it's not about me at all. See, about two weeks ago, I had this idea. When it first came to mind, it, it was just too big. It was just too crazy. It was like ridiculous. So I blew it off, whatever. But it kept coming back and it kept flirting with my mind. So um, uh, story number four is about the most wonderful girl in the world. Her name is Joanna Kukowska. She's actually here with us today, and she happens to be my girlfriend. She's the front row right now. She has no idea I'm doing this. And as a matter of fact, I would like to invite her up on the stage right now. Can we please have a round of applause for Asha? <laughs> Baby, come up. A bigger round of applause for Asha. All right. <laughs> See, um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, there's a cool story. For her birthday in October, I actually had this book put together. It's right there. This book has all of our Facebook chat history inside. It's, uh, it's a big book, you can tell, right? It's freaking 800 pages. It took me a lot of work. And about a week ago, I thought to go to page number one of that book to see the first day that we ever spoke to each other. And it says March 13. Get it? That's exactly a year from now. And that has been the best year of my life on this planet. I'm not talking about my home planet, on this planet by far. <laughs> and I've never been happier. Get on the dot, baby. That's the legendary red dot. Get on the dot. <laughs> and I've <laughs> never been happier. And I've never done stuff with somebody that I loved so much. And I know it's crazy. And it's probably not the time or the place, and it scares me. But you know what? Fuck that. I'm not going to get a what-if question out of that. There are three pictures that are coming up. And after that, oh, yeah, that's you parachuting. Sorry about that once again, baby. Uh, look, Asha, I love you with all my heart. <laughs> and I've never loved anybody the way I love you. I've lived a year with you. I do not ever want to live another day without you. So I have one question, baby. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's all from us, baby. <laughs> oh, by the way, can I have the slides put up? Or maybe your mom and dad say it's okay. <laughs> and your sister is in the audience. What's up? I have a fiance, people! Woo! Ha ha ha!